As the days get ever closer, things are falling in place for the UK to leave the European Union tomorrow on the 31st of January at 11pm GMT. As part of this process, the European Parliament had to vote to approve the passage of the withdrawal agreement. You'll remember that this is the agreement that MPs in the UK's House of Commons signed off not too long ago. And now it's been ratified by MEPs in the European Parliament too. In this video, we're going to explain what happened and what it means for the passage of Brexit. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel for more Brexit updates. And if you're still interested in the EU and the member states that make it up post-Brexit, then be sure to subscribe to our TLDR EU channel too, for all the latest on the Union. There's a link to that channel down below. So the withdrawal agreement that we discussed at length on this channel lays out how the UK will leave the European Union. It explains how the transition period will work, setting out that the UK will continue to follow EU laws during the 11-month transition period, and that it will all end at the end of 2020. That is, unless both sides agree to an extension. It also states that the UK will continue to make financial contributions to the EU, up to an expected £39 billion. The agreement sets out how the Northern Irish border will be managed, and the issues that could arise if the UK and EU don't agree to a deal by the end of 2020. It also sets out how citizens' rights will be affected by the UK's exit, explaining how EU and UK citizens can continue living exactly where they are. Notably, the withdrawal agreement doesn't go into much detail about any kind of future trade deal, merely dedicating a few pages to a brief outline of how such a trade deal could work. Because of this, once it's implemented on Friday, the UK will enter the transition period, and initially, little will change, as we explained in another video last week. So, remind me why we're talking about this agreement again today. Well, as I mentioned up front, the European Parliament has now joined the UK's Parliament and UK and EU negotiators in signing off on the agreement. This all happened yesterday, when MEPs voted to approve the agreement. Hanno votato 683 deputati, favorevoli 621. With 621 votes in favour, 38 against and 13 abstentions. This means that the UK can now progress with Brexit and is able to leave under the terms of the withdrawal agreement on Friday. But to end the story here would miss some of the most striking parts of the Parliament's vote on Wednesday. It would miss the rendition of Old Lang Syne that MEPs broke into after the result was called. And it would miss the very clear message that Ursula von der Leyen, the European Commission President, was sending to Britain. The debate before the agreement's passage was certainly an emotional affair for many. British and European MEPs were visibly upset to see the UK leave the bloc, with Molly Scott Catto breaking into tears in her final speech to the Parliament. In spite of the powerful campaign we've waged for four years, with grief and regret, I accept that we will leave the European Union on Friday. Oh no, here come the tears. Our future as a country has no clear shape beyond a few slogans, and this means that we have some very important political tasks ahead. Now is not the time then now is not the time to campaign to rejoin, but we must keep the dream alive, especially for young people who are overwhelmingly pro-European. I hold in my heart the knowledge that one day I will be back in this chamber celebrating our return to the heart of Europe. Thank you. Eva Hofstadt, the leader of the European Parliament's Brexit steering group, was also in a solemn mood when he was speaking to Parliament. Sad to see a nation leaving, a great nation, that uh, all of us have given so much, I mean culturally, I mean economically, I mean politically, even its own blood in two world wars. It's in fact sad to see a country leaving that twice liberated us twice given his blood to liberate Europe. It doesn't mean that we don't have a responsibility to make sure that the union to which they will return will be an other union, effective and more democratic. So this vote is not an adieu. This vote, Mr. President, is in my opinion only an au revoir. Thank you very much. You won't be surprised to hear that Brexit party leader Nigel Farage was in a significantly more upbeat mood when making his speech to the Parliament. 
<laughs> so this is it, the final chapter, the end of the road. A 47-year political experiment that the British, frankly, have never been very happy with. My mother and father signed up to a common market, not to a political union, not to flags, anthems, presidents, and now you even want your own army. But the most significant point is this. What happens at 11pm, the 31st of January, marks the point of no return. Once we've left, we are never coming back. But my view has changed of Europe. In 2005, I saw the Constitution. I saw it rejected by the French. I saw it rejected by the Dutch. And I saw you in these institutions ignore them, bring it back as a Lisbon Treaty and boast you could ram it through without there being referendums. Well, the Irish did say no and were forced to vote again. But what we've proved is the British are too big to bully, thank goodness. I want Brexit to start a debate across the rest of Europe. What do we want from Europe? If we want trade, friendship, cooperation, reciprocity, we don't need a European Commission. We don't need a European Court. We don't need these institutions and all of this power. And I can promise you, both in UKIP and indeed in the Brexit Party, we love Europe. We just hate the European Union. It's as simple as that. I know you're going to miss us. I know you want to ban our national flags, but we're going to wave you goodbye. And we'll look forward in the future to working with you as sovereign. If you disobey the rules, you get cut off. Could we please remove the flags? But the debate was about more than just theatricalities, emotional goodbyes and flag waving. European leaders took the opportunity to send a message to the UK about the kind of relationship they wanted with the UK going forward. Ursula von der Leyen took up a conciliatory tone, recognising the impact the UK has had on the Union, describing British Commissioner Arthur Cockfield as the father of the single market, and recognising Labour Chancellor Roy Jenkins' role in establishing the single currency. She also commented on the future closeness she wanted to see between the UK and the EU, commenting on the strength of the deal that the EU was offering. She told the Parliament that the deal being offered by the EU was an unprecedented zero tariffs, zero quota deal, and said all Britain needed to do to secure it was align on some basic standards. Equal standards and level playing field agreements have always been fundamental to the European model, with von der Leyen telling the Parliament that we will certainly not expose our companies to unfair competition, and it is very clear that the trade-off is simple. She went on to say that she believed the United Kingdom and European Union have a mutual interest in the closest possible partnership. No new partnership will bring back the benefits of being part of the same union, but we have the duty to see the best for the British and European people in a post-Brexit world. Von der Leyen closed her remarks by quoting George Eliot, saying, Only in the agony of parting do we look into the depth of love. We will always love you and we will never be far. Long live Europe. How do you think the UK should go about leaving the EU? Do you think there's still time for both sides to reach an agreement and secure a close relationship? Do you think that a deal is the worst thing for Britain and that the UK should stride out into the world untethered? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments below. You can also get involved in the conversation over on Discord. There's a link to our server below and by joining you can take part in discussions about all kinds of topics from European politics and Brexit to gaming and philosophy. Join the over 1,000 people on the server and join the conversation today. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to be updated on Brexit as it plays out and as the UK leaves the EU tomorrow. And if you want more content from us, you can find us across other social networks simply by searching for TLDR News.